This video tutorial will demonstrate how to send emails on the Raspberry Pi using both Python and Node.js. In addition, SendGrid webhooks will be used to allow the Raspberry Pi to receive emails and run different code in response to the email contents. On a small breadboard, I have an LCD display connected to a Raspberry Pi displaying the temperature and humidity readings from a DHT22 sensor. I'll move a candle close to the sensor, which should raise the temperature. The Pi will signal a hot warning at 20 degrees Celsius. At this threshold, a notification email is sent. Here's my inbox. There's a new email from the Pi with the DHT22 readings. I'll open the email. Here's the cool part, pun intended. Click to reply and type fan on for the message. Click send and very quickly the fan turns on. The Pi received the fan on email, read the message, and turned the fan on. To begin as usual, run sudo apt-get update and upgrade to ensure the Pi is up to date. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2 with a fresh install of the latest Raspbian Jesse. Type node version. The Node.js version that comes installed with Raspbian is too old. I'll use curl to download the latest version, which as of this video is 5.9. Afterwards, sudo apt-get install is used to install the download. It will also install npm, which is the Node.js package manager, which allows you to easily add third-party libraries to your code. Open a web browser and go to sendgrid.com. Click sign up. Sendgrid provides a very powerful email API. There's several paid options if your email volume gets high. However, they also provide a free option. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. The free plan gives you 12,000 emails per month. You would click try for free to sign up, but since I already have an account, I'll just log in. After you sign up and your account is provisioned, click the settings tab on your dashboard. Click API keys. Click create API key and pick general API key. Give the key a name. Check mail send full access and then press save. API keys provide a way for your programs to authenticate with SendGrid. It's more secure than transmitting usernames and passwords with your code. The API key is only displayed once, so copy it to your clipboard. It's important that you keep this confidential. However, if it's exposed like mine is now, you can always delete it and create a new one. In fact, it's a good security measure to regenerate the keys periodically. The first program is in Python, so I'll use pip install to install the Python SendGrid library. GKSU is used to open idle with super user permissions. It's not really necessary for this first example, but it will be later when we start using the GPIO pins. Create a new blank Python file and save it. I'll save it in documents and call it sendgrid. The first command imports the sendgrid Python library that we just installed. A sendgrid client is instantiated. It takes an API key for the parameter, so paste in your sendgrid API key that you previously copied to the clipboard. Hard coding an API key like this is okay for a demo, but it's a very poor security practice. The safer way to handle keys is to store them in a settings file that's outside your program. Also make sure that the settings file is secure and excluded from GitHub because hackers troll public repositories for such oversights. A SendGrid mail message is instantiated. Message add to adds the recipient. Message set from sets the sender's email address. Set subject sets the subject and set HTML sets the message body text. And then you just use client send to send the email. I really like the SendGrid API because as you can see, it's intuitive and user friendly. Save the program and run it. An email has been sent. Back in my inbox and an email arrives from the Pi. This code isn't just for the Raspberry Pi. You can easily run it on a desktop or web server. Okay, next let's try a Node.js version. In your home directory, create a new folder called SendGrid Node. CD into the new folder. Type npm init to create a package JSON file. This isn't really necessary for these examples, but I think it's good practice. You can just hit enter to skip any or all fields. I'll specify a description and an author. npm install is used to install the SendGrid Node.js package. npm gives you access to an enormous library of open source packages, which you can browse at npmjs.com. nano index.js to open a new JavaScript file. I'll paste in code to save time. A split screen with the Python code shows that they're very similar. Require imports the SendGrid package and registers the API key. The rest of the code is basically the same. Since this code doesn't do anything different from the previous Python app, let's add a feature. Save the file and exit. A package called Raspy Sensors is installed with npm. Just hit enter to accept the defaults for all the prompts. This package provides support for several sensors, including the DHT22 temperature humidity sensor, which I've used in several of my previous videos. After the Raspberry Sensors package is installed, type nanoindex.js to go back to the program. 
Use Strict adds strict mode which enforces better programming practices. The Raspi sensors package is imported. A DHT22 is instantiated on the Pi's pin 7. Note that this is board numbering and not the more common BCM numbering, which is equivalent to GPIO4. A new promise is added to handle the sensor's asynchronous response. Variables T and H will hold temperature and humidity. The DHT22 fetch method pulls the sensor. It takes a callback parameter which will be called twice, once for temperature and once for humidity. The callback is passed an error if any, and data contains the sensor data. The promise is rejected if an error occurs. Otherwise, the data type is checked to determine whether to record temperature or humidity. When both temperature and humidity have been captured, the promise resolves. This fires the promise then method, which constructs a send grid email message. The then statement is closed with some error catching. The email subject is changed to DHT22 sensor. The body of the email is changed to show the temperature in Celsius. Since the body is HTML, we can use the HTML degree code. The humidity is also included as a percent. Save the file and exit nano. Here's a schematic showing the DHT22 connected to the Pi. The sensor's pin 1 is connected to 3.3 volts on the Pi. Pin 2 is connected to the board pin 7 or BCM GPIO4. Pin 4 is connected to ground and a 10K pull-up resistor is placed between the VCC and data lines. We'll also use an LCD display later. The LCD VCC is connected to a Pi 5V pin. The ground, read-write, and backlight cathode are connected to ground. RS goes to GPIO 21, enable the GPIO 20, and data 4 through 7 to GPIO 16, 7, 8, and 25 respectively. Two potentiometers will control the display brightness and contrast. One terminal from each pot goes to ground and the other to 5 volts. The wipers are connected to the LCD contrast and backlight anode. On a small breadboard, I have a DHT22, an LCD display, and a dual potentiometer. The DHT22 pin 4 is connected to ground. The dual pot has terminals on one side connected to ground and 5 volts on the other side. The LCD display ground is connected to the ground rail. The VCC is connected to a 5 volt rail. The contrast pin goes to the wiper on the left pot. The read-write pin is connected to ground to ensure write only. You don't want to read a 5 volt pin because you can damage the Pi. The backlight anode is connected to the wiper of the right pot and the cathode is connected to ground. The LCD RS is connected to the Pi's GPIO 21. Enable to GPIO 20. Data 4 to 16. Data 5 to 7. Data 6 to 8 and data 7 to 25. A Pi ground pin is connected to the breadboard's ground rail. A Pi 5 volt pin is connected to the 5 volt rail. The DHT22 VCC pin 1 is connected to a Pi 3.3 volt pin. The data pin is connected to BCM GPIO4, which is board pin 7. A 10K ohm resistor is placed between pin 1 and 2 on the sensor. Okay, that's all it takes for the hardware. Back in terminal, sudo node index to run the program. sudo is required because the program uses the GPIO. In my inbox, an email from the Pi. The message body shows the temperature 23.5 degrees Celsius and 31.1% humidity. So we can send emails. What about receiving? SendGrid provides a parse webhook API. Incoming emails are parsed by SendGrid and the metadata is posted to your app, which can be running on any computer, such as a Raspberry Pi. A domain name is required to receive email. If you don't already have a domain, there are several internet registrars where you can buy domains, such as GoDaddy, Enom, and Google Domains. I'll be using the domain for my website, rototron.info. Once you get a domain, use your registrar's control panel to add an MX record. An MX record specifies what mail server handles your email. Name is for an optional subdomain. All registrars have slightly different tools. For GoDaddy, use an at symbol to use the primary domain. If you already have an email set up for your domain, then you could use a subdomain here. For example, if I used pi for the name, then only emails to addresses at pi.rototron.info would be parsed. I'll stick with the primary at rototron.info. Value is the mail server address, mx.sendgrid.net. For priority, 10 is a good value. Click to add the record. Most registrars have detailed instructions on how to add MX records if yours looks different than mine. The first webhook example uses Python. A lightweight web framework called Flask is required. It can be installed with sudo pip install flask. In idle, I'll create a new file, then save it under documents and call it webhook. 
Flask and Request are imported from Flask. A Flask app is instantiated. An app route decorator is placed before a SendGrid parser method. Parse route posts will get handled by this method. A route is just a path on a website. Basically, this method will process email data posted from SendGrid. Recipient is pulled from request form get to. Sender, subject, and body are pulled from the corresponding form fields. Attachment count is stored, and if there are any, then the attachments are put in an array. This simple example will just print the results to the console. It's important to always return OK, otherwise SendGrid will keep trying to post the email data. The server is started using app run. Save the program and run it. A web server is up and running on the Raspberry Pi. Currently it's only accessible locally on port 5000. A free service called ngrok will be used to put the Pi on the public internet. In the browser, go to ngrok.com. Click sign up to create an account. I already have one, so I'll just log in. Click the download tab and download the Linux ARM version to the Pi. Go back to the dashboard and click the auth tab. Click copy to copy your tunnel auth token to the clipboard. This will provide HTTPS secure communication. Open a new terminal and create a folder in your home directory called ngrok. CD into the new folder. I downloaded the ngrok program to my downloads folder. Unzip the downloaded file to the ngrok folder. No other installation is required. Run ngrok with the auth token switch and paste in your auth token from the clipboard. This configures HTTPS and it only has to be done once unless you regenerate your auth token. Now start ngrok with the HTTP switch set to port 5000. The status screen shows that the Pi is now on the internet. Copy the HTTPS URL to the clipboard. This is the public web address for the Pi. Go back to the SendGrid website dashboard. Under Settings, click the Inbound Parse tab. Click Add Host and URL. For host name, supply your domain name. I'm using rototron.info. Optionally, you could specify a subdomain here too. For URL, paste in the ngrok address from the clipboard. Don't forget to add slash parse to the end of the URL. Parse is the route we specified earlier for the post to the Flask web server. Click Save. The webhook is now enabled and all email to rototron.info will be parsed and posted to the Pi. I'll send an email to pi at rototron.info, although any address at rototron.info will work. Test to the Raspberry Pi for the subject and hello world for the message body. Click Send. Back on the Pi, the message has already arrived. The Python console shows the parse data. Let's take a look at how to implement a webhook in Node.js. From the home directory, create a new folder called webhook node and cd into it. npm init. I'll just give a description of webhook test in node. npm is used to install both Express and Multer. Express is a web framework similar to Python's Flask. Multer is a middleware used to handle the email form data nano index.js to open a new file. To save time, I'll paste in all the code. Express and Multer are imported. The upload variable handles email attachments. You can add additional array elements if you need more than two attachments. An Express app is instantiated. The port is set to 5000. A route is set to handle all posts to the parse path. Upload is the Multer middleware. Any errors will be logged. I'll just return 200, which is equivalent to OK because we don't want SendGrid to keep trying. Otherwise, recipient, sender, body, subject, and attachment count are all retrieved from the request body. Any attachments are looped through and pushed to an array. The results are logged to the console and a 200 OK response is returned. Server is instantiated with AppListen on the specified port and it's logged. Save the changes and exit. The code is functionally identical to the Python version, so let's give it an upgrade. NPM install is used to add the LCD package. It provides support for character LCD display modules, such as the 16x2 that we connected earlier. I have several other LCD display videos if you're interested. Use nano to reopen the index file. At the top of the code, the LCD package is imported. Then an LCD is instantiated. The GPL pins for RS, enable, and data are specified. Also, the screen dimensions 16x2 are passed. I'll remove some of the superfluous code to make it easier to see the updates. This version will display the subject and the beginning of the body to the LCD display. LCD clear clears the display. Once complete, it calls LCD print, which writes the email subject to the top row of the display. When the print statement finishes, set cursor switches to the lower row of the display and print writes the body. 
Replace is used to remove any new lines which would show up as garbage characters. Save the changes and exit. Start the program with sudo node index. The console shows the web server listening on port 5000. The ngrok service is still running so we're good to go. I'll send a new email to pi at rototron.info. Hi Raspberry Pi for the subject, LCD display on for the body, and click send. On the breadboard very shortly, the message subject and body are posted to the LCD display. All the code, schematics, and notes for this video are available on my website, rototron.info. A link will be placed in the video description. I hope you found this video helpful. You can support this channel by subscribing or leaving a like. Thanks for watching.